Hello and welcome to this video titled Beiti Ma'a Jad My Home with Jad Brought to you by www.learningarabicwithangela.com A short story in Arabic with English translation and transcription about home or house vocabulary Learning objectives for this video, we will learn some key vocabulary and key phrases and short sentences regarding the topic of house or home vocabulary in Arabic, such as different rooms, furniture and miscellaneous items. We will also touch up on grammar, sentence structure, conjugation of verbs, the future tense, possessive object and demonstrative pronouns. Don't forget that the ebook is available for free download by visiting the website www.learningarabicwithangela.com. You can find the link for the download in the description box of the video. There will also be some practice questions at the end of the ebook and some notes for you to follow. Let's start. Bait. Home. House. Menzil. Home. House. Second. Maskan. Home. House. Place of residence or living. Shikka, apartment, flat. Binaya, mabna, building. Imara Building Let's review Bait Home House Menzil Also Home House Sakan Maskan Home House or Place of Residence or Living Binaya, Mabna, building, Shikka, apartment or flat, Imara, also building. Marhaban, ismi Jad. Hello, my name is Jad. Hada Beiti. This is my house. There's more to demonstrative pronouns in Arabic because we have human and non-human nouns. So we've got masculine and feminine, which we've covered already, but we also have human and non-human. So when we say rajul, that means a man. So this is a human masculine noun. Imra'a, it is a feminine human noun when we say bait which is house that's a non-human masculine noun matkhana that's again a non-human feminine noun so how would the demonstrative pronouns be 
we're gonna say هذا رجل this is a man هذان رجلان these are two men هؤلاء رجال or هؤلاء رجال which means these are men in the plural now for the human feminine such as امرأة or woman we're gonna say هذه امرأة this is a woman هاتان امرأتان these are two women for the dual feminine هؤلاء نساء these are women for the plural now for the non-human masculine هذا بيت this is a house هذان بيتان these are two houses هذه بيوت these are houses for the non-human feminine again it's gonna be هذه هذه مدخنة هاتان مدخنتان these are two chimneys هذه مداخن or هذه مداخن which means these are chimneys This brings us to the topic of possessive pronouns in Arabic language. In English, you're going to simply say your house, and that's for anyone. But in Arabic, if you're addressing a male, you're going to say baytuka. You use the suffix ka, baytuka. If you were addressing a female, you're going to say baytuki. So use the suffix ki. If you were addressing three plus males, that is in the masculine plural, you're going to say baytukum. You use the suffix kum. If you were addressing two people in the dual, you're going to say baytukuma. You use the suffix kuma. If you were addressing three plus females, that is in the feminine plural, you're going to say Baytukunna. You use the suffix kunna. Notice the similar sounds. Anta, that's the subject pronoun. Anta, and you've got baytuka. So, anta, baytuka. You can hear the same sounds at the end. Anti, baytuki. So, it's the same sounds at the end. Antum, baytukum. أنتما بيتكما أنتنا بيتكنا Moving on to the third person We're going to say بيته His house بيتها Her house بيتهما their house for the dual, that means for two people. Baytuhum, their house, that is for the masculine plural. Baytuhunna, that is their house for the feminine plural. رأيتم بيتي من الخارج. You've seen my home from the outside. الآن سنراه من الداخل. Now we will see it from the inside. Let's break it down. Al Kharij, the outside, is opposite of Al Dakhil, the inside. Al 
So, Jad said, رأيتم بيتي من الخارج. You saw. رأيتم. That means, أنتم رأيتم. Now, it's perfectly acceptable in Arabic not to use the pronoun and just continue the sentence or start the sentence with the verb. So, you don't have to say, أنتم رأيتم. You can just say, رأيتم. You saw. So, notice in English, you have to say, you saw. You can't say, so. But in Arabic, you just say, رأيتم. And that's perfectly acceptable. You can also say, أنتم رأيتم. And that's fine. So, you have two ways. But for native speakers, mainly we just say رأيتم. That means you saw. Now, let's look at verb رأى. Verb to see in Arabic and its conjugation. So, verb رأى is a verb with a defective ending that means it's got a vowel ending which is alif maqsura at the end hence the alif maqsura gonna become ya when we do the past tense conjugation so ra'a in the past tense if we're gonna conjugate it we're gonna say ana ra'aytu i saw ana Ra'aytu. So the alif sound changed to ya. Nahnu ra'ayna. We saw. Nahnu ra'ayna. Anta ra'ayta. You saw. For the masculine. Anti ra'ayti. You saw for the feminine. You can hear the sound. The alif changed to ya. Antum ra'aytum. You saw. That is for the masculine plural. Now moving on to the dual. Antuma, which means you both, like for two people. Antuma. Ra'aytuma. You saw. For two people. Antunna ra'aytunna. Antunna ra'aytunna. You saw. That is for the feminine plural. Now, for the third person, not all of them will have the ya sound. So, huwa ra'a. The alif is still there at the end. Alif maqsura is still there at the end. Huwa ra'a. He saw. Hiya ra'at. She saw. Hiya ra'at. Now for the dual masculine. Huma ra'aya. Huma ra'aya. They both so for the masculine dual. Now for the feminine dual in the third person. Huma ra'ata. They both so for the feminine Dual. Huma ra'ata. Now for the masculine plural in the third person. Hum ra'aw. Hum ra'aw. They saw. Now for the feminine plural in the third person. Hunna 
رأينا هن رأينا they saw in the feminine plural Now remember Jad said والآن سنراه من الداخل and now we're going to see it from the inside and that meant نحن سنراه we will see it but he just said سنراه so it's not necessary or compulsory again to use the pronoun نحن you can just say سنراه that means we will see it now notice the suffix sa in red color it changes the verb from the present tense to the future tense so nara sa nara that becomes in the future we will see who is the attached personal pronoun referring to the house we will see it that means it now let's do some conjugation in the present tense for verb ra'a verb to see so it is a defective verb as we said ending in alif maqsura and the alif maqsura vowel at the end um, when we are conjugating it in the present tense uh, you're going to notice that the sound just before the ending is compatible with the ending so it sounds the same so a ara is you have the sound of the alif at the end so the letter before which is the ra also has a compatible sound which is the fatha so ana ara nahnu nara Anta Tara So you can hear the pattern there. So Anna Ara I see Nahnu Nara we see Anta Tara you see for the masculine masculine singular Anti Taraina you see for the feminine singular. Now for the masculine plural Antum Tarauna for the dual it's gonna be Antuma Tarayani Antuma Tarayani for the feminine plural it's gonna be antunna tarayna antunna tarayna now for the third person huwa Yara, he sees. Hiya, Tara, she sees. Huma, Yarayani, they both, for the masculine dual, they see. Huma, Tarayani, they both, for the feminine dual in the third person, they both. See, huma tarayani. Now for the masculine plural in the third person, hum yarauna, hum yarauna. For the feminine plural in the third person, hunna yaraina, hunna yaraina. If you get used to the pattern that we've discussed here with verb ra'a in the past and present tense, you can apply it to 
similar verbs with similar defective endings. So it's going to be easier for you to conjugate similar verbs in the future. So now that we've discussed the present tense, we can move on to the future tense. So to get the future tense in Arabic, you have to use particles such as sa and sofa. So you could say sanara, we will see, or sofa nara, also we will see. Remember, Jad said sanarahu, that means we will see it. This brings us to the topic of object pronouns in Arabic. So in English, you can say something like I, so, you. That's three words. In Arabic, you can simplify that into one word, which is ra'aytuka, or two words, which is ana ra'aytuka. So you can keep the pronoun, which is I, ana, or you can skip it and just stick to ra'aytuka. Ra'aytu, the past tense verb, I saw, and ka, in this case is the attached object pronoun referring to you. Now, if we were addressing a female, we will say Ra'aytuki. Enti, you for the female. Ra'aytuki, Ra'aytuki. Antum for the masculine, plural. Ra'aytukum, I saw you all. Antuma for the dual. Ra'aytukuma, I saw you or I saw you both. Antunna, the feminine, plural. We will say Ra'aytukunna, I saw you all for the feminine, plural. Moving on to the third person, huwa is he, so ra'aytuhu, I saw him. Here is she, so ra'aytuha, I saw her. Huma is they or they both, so it's going to be ra'aytuhuma, I saw both of them or the two of them. Hum means they in the masculine plural in Arabic, so it's going to be ra'aytuhum. And hunna means they in the feminine plural in Arabic, so that's going to be ra'aytuhunna. I saw them all, the females. Now that we've made sense of what we said, let's review the sentences again. Ra'aytum bayti min al kharij. You've seen my home from the outside. Al an sanarahu min al dakhil. Now we will see it from the inside. Ahlan. وَسَهْلًا بِكُمْ فِي مَنْزِلِي Welcome to my home. أَهْلًا means welcome. It also means hello. You can also say أَهْلًا وَسَهْلًا That also means welcome. بِكُمْ means to you. So أَهْلًا وَسَهْلًا Bikum fi manzili. Welcome to my home. Let's break it down. So 
so we can say ahlan wa sahlan bika welcome that is to you as in a male bika ka ahlan wa sahlan biki as in welcome to you a female ahlan wa sahlan bikum that is welcome to you you in the plural You could alternatively say Marhaban Bika, Marhaban Biki, or Marhaban Bikum. So Marhaban Bika for a male, Marhaban Biki for a female, Marhaban Bikum for the plural masculine. Let's review the sentence again. أهلا وسهلا بكم في منزلي. Welcome to my home. Now we're going to start exploring the house room by room. تفضلوا إلى غرفة الجلوس. Please come into the sitting or living room. غرفة الجلوس غرفة المعيشة sitting or living room غرفة الجلوس غرفة المعيشة Notice in Arabic we conjoin the two words together So if you're reading the two words separately غرفة and then الجلوس However when you want to say the two words together, if you want to sound more natural or like a native, you're going to say غرفتل جلوس as if you conjoined the two words together. غرفتل معيشة أريكا أمتشا هنا أجلس وأشاهد التلفاز. I sit here and watch television. هنا أجلس وأشاهد التلفاز. Let's break it down. هنا which means here is the opposite of hunaka or hunalika in Arabic, which both mean there. But for simplifying, you could just refer to hunaka. So huna versus hunaka, here and there. Ajlisu means Anna Ajlisu. I sit. And as we've mentioned before, you don't have to use a pronoun before the verb in Arabic. So you can just say Ajlisu. So instead of saying I sit, as in English, you used I, you just say the verb Ajlisu. Ushahidu. Similarly, ushahidu means ana ushahidu. I watch. Now in Arabic, television could be said atilfaz or atilifizyon. Atilfaz or atilifizyon. طابتي وكتبي على السجادة. My ball and books are on the carpet. طابة means ball. So, 
kitabati, my bow. Wa kutubi, kutub is books. So my books, kutubi, ala sajada, are on the carpet. Now notice one thing. In English, we have the verb to be. So we say, my bowl and books are on the carpet. However, in Arabic, we don't have verb to be. So straight away, tabati wa kutubi, ala, on the carpet. We didn't use are or verb to be. So my bowl and books, literally, on the table. Tabati wa kutubi, ala sajada. Let's break it down. So once again, tabati, my ball, taba, ball. So when we say tabati, we use the suffix e, my ball. And when we say kutub, that's the plural of books. So kutub is a plural of kitab. And we add the suffix e, kutubi. Let's say Pen, qalam. We're going to add the suffix e. So, qalami or kub, for example, and that's a cup in Arabic. Kubi, my cup, kubi. So, tabati wa kutubi ala sajada. My ball and books are on the carpet. Let's review. غرفة الجلوس أو غرفة المعيشة Sitting room or living room مصباح أرضي Floor lamp كنبة صوفة مكيف Air conditioner الأرض The floor سجادة Carpet مدفأة Radiator Tafadalu ila Gurfatin Naum. Please come in to the bedroom. Tafadalu ila Gurfatin Naum. غرفة النوم The bedroom النوم means sleep or sleeping Hence غرفة النوم غرفة means room So in Arabic غرفة النوم The bedroom هذا سريري this is my bed. Sarir in Arabic means bed. So, sariri means my bed. We added the suffix e. Hada sariri. Anamu hala sariri. I sleep on my bed. Anamu means I sleep. It comes from the verb nama, which means the verb to sleep in Arabic. Hadihi khizana. This is a closet. In English, khizana could mean closet, chest of drawers, commode, locker, or Cupboard. Notice Khizana is a feminine noun, so we used Hadihi. Sarir is a masculine noun, so we said Hada Sariri. Another synonym for Khizana in Arabic is Dulab. So Khizana or Dulab, closet. Ah, 
أضع فيها أغراضي I put my things in it أضع فيها أغراضي Let's break it down أضع comes from the verb وضع which is the verb to put or to place in Arabic فيها is composed of في which is a particle of جر in Arabic and ها which means in it so ها is the attached pronoun referring to it the closet so أضع فيها I put or I place in it أغراضي my things remember we said we have to add the suffix e to make it into mine so أغراض means things so غراض is a singular noun a thing أغراض is a plural noun so أغراضي my things hence the, the sentence becomes أضع فيها أغراضي I put my things in it Now let's try a different version of the sentence Now Jad is saying أضع فيها ملابسي أضع فيها ملابسي I put my clothes in it Malabis in Arabic means cloth. So he's saying, أضعو فيها ملابسي My cloth. ملابسي هذا مصباح This is a lamp. Remember, we spoke about the floor lamp. مصباح أرضي in general, if you're going to say lamp, that means misbah, misbah, lamp. Now, let's try saying a useful sentence. يُضِيءُ الْمِصْبَاحُ الْغُرْفَةِ يُضِيءُ الْمِصْبَاحُ الْغُرْفَةِ The lamp lights up the room. يُضِيءُ comes from the verb أضاء verb to light Now Jad is showing you his painting So he's saying هذه لوحة This is a painting لوحة painting هذه لوحة You could also say هذه صورة صورة means picture So هذه صورة This is a picture Another way of saying it in Arabic is هذه لوحة فنية or لوحة فنية This is a painting Fan means art فنية artistic a work of art So when you say لوحة فنية that means it's a painting or an artistic painting لوحة is a feminine noun So the adjective فنية has to follow the noun in Arabic the adjective always follow the noun it follows it in two things it follows it in number and it follows it in gender so lawhatun is one that means we're gonna use an adjective that is singular and lawhatun is also feminine so we're gonna use an adjective that is also feminine so, لوحة فنية إن 
إنها لوحة عن الطبيعة It is a painting about nature إنها لوحة عن الطبيعة Let's break it down إنها لوحة عن الطبيعة إن is a particle of nasb or a subjunctive mood particle In Arabic inna means it indeed is or truly is So you're saying it is indeed a painting So inna ha, ha is the attached pronoun referring to it So it is inna ha Lawhatun, a painting An An means about It's a preposition So an is a particle of jar as well At-tabi'a Innaha lawhatun an at It is a painting about nature An additional detail, so you could say إنها لوحة عن الطبيعة Or you can say هذه لوحة عن الطبيعة Both mean the same thing مصباح كهربائي مصباح كهربائي that means electric lamp. Lamba simply means a bulb or lamp. Two ways of saying the same thing. So you can say misbahun kahrabai or lamba. Kahraba is electricity. Kahraba. Kahrabai is electric. Kahrabai. Now let's look at the bed and its vocabulary. Sarir. Sarir is bed. Wisada or Mikhadda is Hello. We said Mikhadda. Rita or Lihaf means duvet or kilt or comforter or cover in English. Rita Lihaf. Firash means mattress. Firash. Firash can also refer to the bed itself. So you could say Sariri, my bed, or Firashi, which also means my bed. Hayya bina al ana ila al matbakh, ghurfati al mufaddala. Let's now go to the kitchen, my favorite room. Hayya bina l'ana ila al-matbakh, ghurfati al-mufaddala. Let's break it down. Hayya bina. Hayya bina. That means let's go. Hayya is something called ism fa'l amr in Arabic grammar. So it means it acts as a verb by commanding or providing a command. Just like an imperative verb, however, it is not a verb. And the second thing is that it has a fixed case ending 
and it's always pronounced the same. Hayya. Now, bina means to us. So, let us. Let us go. Hayya is giving the command here to hurry up or be quick. In some spoken dialects in Arabic, you frequently hear the word yalla. Yalla, however, yalla is not fusha. It is a colloquial um, word that is commonly used by native speakers. Hayya bina ila means let's go to. Ila in this sentence means to. So hayya bina ila al matbakh means let's go to the kitchen. Ghurfati al mufaddala. Ghurfati al mufaddala. My favorite room. The ya in Urfati refers to my or mine. So it's the attached uh, possessive pronoun. And al mufaddala is the adjective. Now look at al mufaddala. You have a feminine ending which is ta marbuta. Why? Because Urfa is a feminine noun. So we have to use a an adjective that is also feminine. So if we were saying my favorite book and book is a masculine noun in Arabic, we're going to say Kitabi al-Mufaddal. Kitabi al-Mufaddal. We don't have Ta Marbuta at the end. But over here, Urfa is feminine. So we said Ghurfati al mufaddala. Ghurfati al mufaddala. So the sentence becomes Hayya bin al ana ila al matbakh. Ghurfati al mufaddala. Let's go now to the kitchen. My favorite room. Now, one more tip when you're reading Arabic. As a beginner, you're going to probably stop at every word. And when you're reading Al, you're going to go as Al. Ila Al Matbakh. If you have listened to my uh, pronunciation or a native speaker, you notice that we join the words and the endings together. So when we're moving on from one word, to another, it happens very smoothly and swiftly. So it's going to be Hayya bin al ana ila al matbakh. So it's joined together. Hayya bin al ana instead of bin al ana. Ila al matbakh instead of ila al matbakh. Ghurfati. المفضلة. The way I would say it would be غرفة المفضلة. Also, when you're using إضافة like كتاب التلميذ, the book of the student. So instead of كتاب التلميذ, كتاب التلميذ. So it feels like it's one word together. هذه سلة القمامة هنا أرمي القمامة This is the litter bin سلة القمامة The litter bin هنا أرمي القمامة Here I bin or I throw the litter هذا فرن مايكروويف. This is a microwave oven. Notice that microwave is a borrowed word from English. The Arabic um, phrase for 
microwave would be too long and complicated but it's perfectly acceptable just to say microwave and you'll find it in the Arabic dictionary as well يسخن الطعام it warms up the food وهذه غلاية تسخن الماء لصنع الشاي والقهوة and this is a kettle غلاية kettle تسخن الماء it warms up the water لصنع الشاي والقهوة to make tea and coffee لي means to صنعي literally means the making of so it warms up the water to لي صنعي for the making or to make tea and coffee الشاي والقهوة Let's review. Now let's review some of the key vocabulary in the kitchen. Mirsala, sink, Ghalaya, kettle, Mirwaha, fan, Furnu, microwave, microwave oven, Thalaja or Barad means fridge. Furn, oven, stove or cooker. Sallatul Qumama, litter bin. Ghassala, washing machine. Walan, sanara ghurfata taam. And now we're going to see the dining room. Walan, سنرى غرفة الطعام. Let's break it down. سنرى س plus نرى. So that means we will see. س أو سوف. They change the verb from the present. To the future, so they indicate the future. So you could either say "sanara," that means we will see, or "saufa nara," we will see. And you could use them with pretty much every present tense verb to change it to the future in Arabic. Hurfatu taam. This phrase in Arabic is made up of two nouns and it's considered a idafa construction. So it's a grammatical uh, combination of two nouns whereby the second noun provides more information about the first noun. And it's not just used for possession as what is commonly known in Arabic uh, grammar, like when we want to say um, the book of the student, we say Kitabu at So that means it belongs to the student, the book. But it also means idafa that we're providing information about the first noun. So when we say Ghurfatu at Ghurfa means room and at means food or eating. So hence Ghurfatu at the dining or eating room. Mudaf and mudaf ilay for further information and detailed uh, information and a detailed lesson you can refer to the blog where you will find a uh, comprehensive explanation about mudaf and mudaf ilay well and sanara ghurfata taam and now we're going to see the dining room. Huna atanawalu taama maa aailati. Here is where I have food with my family. 
هنا أتناول الطعام مع عائلتي أتناول الطعام is a common phrase that you could use it in Arabic instead of just saying أكل which means I eat so أتناول الطعام أتناول وجبة الغداء I'm having the lunch meal or I'm having lunch you could also use it for things like tea or coffee for example let's drink tea لنتناول الشاي هذه الطاولة وهذه الكراسي this is the table and these are the chairs طاولة table طاولات tables كرسي chair كراسي chairs هنا نجلس إلى السفرة He is where we sit at the dinner table You could also say هنا نجلس إلى المائدة So you could say هنا نجلس إلى السفرة أو هنا نجلس إلى المائدة السفرة المائدة Both mean dinner table and when we say نجلسو إلى that means we sit at وهذا براد المياه and this is the water dispenser or cooler وهذا براد المياه أشرب منه الماء البارد I drink from it cold water أشرب منه الماء البارد Now mineral water in Arabic is called مياه معدنية مياه معدنية وهذه علبة المناديل and this is the tissue box وهذه علبة المناديل علبة box مناديل is the plural of tissue so علبة المناديل tissue box Mandil is one tissue, it's the singular noun. Manadil means tissue, so it's the plural noun. Let's review. Let's go over the dining room vocabulary. Ghurfatu ta'am, dining room. Sitara. Curtain or shutter. Barradul miyah, water dispenser or cooler. Tawila, table. Ulbatul manadil, tissue box. Kursi, chair. Karasi, chairs. Anna. جائع I'm hungry جائع means hungry A female would say أنا جائعة I am hungry And now what's on the dinner or dining table? السفرة المائدة dinner or dining table كوب الماء 
water cup كوب الماء كوب العصير juice cup كوب العصير ملعقة spoon ملعقة سكين knife سكين طبق plate طبق شوكة fork شوكة خبز bread خبز ملح salt ملح بهار pepper بهار ملح وبهار salt and pepper زبدة butter زبدة Now about toilet vocabulary الحمام toilet الحمام حوض الاستحمام bathtub حوض الاستحمام كرسي الحمام toilet seat كرسي الحمام ميزان سكيل ميزان منشفة تاول منشفة صابون اليدين hand soap صابون اليدين or you could simply say صابون which is soap صابون Yadain here is a dual or means two hands, so it's the dual for hand, two hands. So, sabunul yadain. Now, if we were going to say it's time to have a bath, hana waqtul istihmam. Hana waqtul istihmam. And finally, some miscellaneous items around the house. Mutafarriqat, miscellaneous. Mutafarriqat. Hadiqa, garden. Hadiqa. Daraj, stairs. Daraj. Miknasatun, kahraba iya. Miknasatun, kahraba iya. Vacuum cleaner. أدوات التنظيف and you could also say أدوات التنظيف cleaning items أدوات تنظيف أركن سيارتي في الموقف I park my car in the car park أركن سيارتي في الموقف موقف means parking lot or car park Thank you for watching. Shukran ala al mutaba'a. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't. You can also find me on Facebook. Just search for Learning Arabic with Angela. Take care and see you in the next video.